Hello, everybody, and welcome to Heal Your Shadow Relationships. I am your host, Neola Sparkus, and I am very pleased to have with me today Catherine Alice. And I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Catherine. She teaches and writes breakthrough material in the arenas of dating and love. Her approach stresses awareness and faith, and this positive, upbeat outlook has helped many singles enjoy their unattached status and has helped many others, thousands actually, go on to find their true love. She was the author of the Dating Love and Soulmates column for Holistic Living magazine. Her book, Love Will Find You, went into, this is impressive, went into its third printing after being published only a few weeks. So that's amazing. Catherine has appeared on TV and major print media as well as numerous live events. She has served as the director for the Agape Spiritual Center's crisis support team for six years. And Agape is where Catherine is based as a licensed spiritual counselor. And uh, that's where I I uh, have commonality with you. I started at Agape, although I got licensed with the Centers for Spiritual Living, but uh, mm -hmm. I so appreciate your being here and uh, talking to us about how to heal our shadow relationships. Well, it's my pleasure to be here with you, Ihola. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. So when, when we talk about shadow relationships, what does that term mean to you? Every expert has had a different take on it, which I really appreciate. Right. Well, it means to me that we're taking account the whole person. We're allowing ourselves to be human. One time, Mother Teresa said that the reason she became herself is she realized that she had an inner Hitler. And so it's interesting that we often try to stuff the part of us we don't like or that we judge as wrong. And yet every one of us has the whole spectrum and it comes in handy sometimes. Anger comes in handy. Uh, depression comes in handy. Sadness. We need all of these emotions. And so I come from the standpoint that we're whole perfect to complete even when we have the whole range within us and we're expressing it. So, so basically, you're saying let's embrace that shadow, the side of us that we think we don't like, that we're, you know, especially I'm sure in dating you have come across this. Everybody wants to put their best foot forward. But where do you draw the line between putting your best foot forward and not being authentically yourself? Well, that's a great question. Uh, it, it's interesting because when you date, you want to be at a high level where you meet, you don't want to bring out all the stuff right away, especially because it lowers the whole connection. And yet, as you go along, you want to be very embracing of each other. And I often, one of the things I work with people on is they come in to me and they're thinking they need to be perfect and they need to put on their very best self or they can't find their soulmate when in fact some of the things they've judged as negative actually are a positive for the right person. And so I have to give them an attitude adjustment and tell them, don't judge yourself that way. You don't know what they want. That is so fascinating. Your flaws might be right for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, and that somebody else might not see it as a flaw. I'll give you an example. I worked with a woman who every one of her friends said, you're too blunt. You know, you're just too direct. People aren't going to like that. You need to lighten up. You need to try to be sweetness and light and maybe hold in some things. Well, she met her guy. She was doing my work and she met her guy and he had dated a series of women and been married to one of them who were not very forthcoming. And so he kept getting left or not knowing what, where he stood, what he did wrong. And so he valued the part of her that was very blunt because he never had to guess he knew where he stood, and he treasured that. So she didn't have to change anything to be right for him. She was right as is. So. Oh, my goodness. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So um, when I was going through your website and looking at all your wonderful articles and wonderful wisdom, I did notice that you had an article about releasing anger, for example, which that's part of the shadow. Yes. And uh, and you kind of said there's two parts to getting along. 
So maybe you want to tell us a little bit about that. Well, the first part is to try to be at the higher level. Anger is not bad. It's very necessary. We would never have that emotion. When we look at children uh, under a certain age, you can kind of see how anger is the best handle. It comes, it goes. It's expressed, we accept it, and it, we move on. So we start accepting ourselves and expressing the parts that need to be expressed, communicating well. And then the flip side of it is that we accept it in our partner. And we don't let it daunt us. We don't let it, we don't take it personally, which is a big mistake. It's all about our own wounds or our, our own shadow. And, um, and we accept it and we don't think it means the relationship's over every time something comes up. We kind of set an intention. It can make us stronger and we can learn from this and handled well, it makes a, a couple get closer and better and better. So, so yeah. So, so the two parts are to first of all, own it in yourself and, and, not, and then not take it personally and then accept it in your partner? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's totally perfect. And, of course, um, dating is one thing. Being a long-term relationship is another thing. When yeah. we're, you know, we're both married. When, when we're in our long-term relationship, you have so much more time to be able to get to know the person, to be able to negotiate, you know, the things that uh, kind of don't rub you off too well. What about when somebody is dating and people are making decisions based on how the last night went or how, you know, the last three weeks went or the last few months right. went? And um, what do you say to them? I tell them to give it some time. Sometimes people go, and this is very much of a shadow part of ourselves. People are scared. Fear is a bad motivation. It's a bad mindset to go into dating with. But when they're scared, they have on their judgy eyes. <laughs> and they're looking at their date, every one of them, just through these critical eyes. And they're checking off the list. Do they have this, this, and this? I believe in a list to get a template, but you don't want to bring the list out on a date. And you want to take these judgy eyes and get rid of them. It doesn't work. And so I ask them to try to see the person from a higher level, connect from a soul level, give them a chance. And when you do, you bring out a better part of that person to really see them. And so that's the biggest thing is to give them a chance to try to see the divine in them. If they're not right, they're not right. They'll know it, but they could have a sacred interaction with somebody for 30 minutes or a couple hours and never have to see them again. But it's always fascinating to get to know a new person. And so I, I asked them to give it a chance. Many times when I've worked with people, if they did, it ended up being great. They just had to be a little more accepting. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who've had terrible first dates. They were both nervous rags, but they liked each other. And uh, they had to find that place that, that would calm them down and, uh, and, and have more faith. And then it, it went well. And they ended up together. So. Oh, that's so wonderful. I know sometimes we could just be so nervous when we're going through the yeah. whole dating thing. And it's such good advice to give it time and just relax and, and take it, you know, take it slowly, of course. Don't jump in and don't make snap judgments. Uh, you know, one one of the reasons that that I decided to do this summit is uh -huh. because I had a client that um, got herself into what tur turned out to be quite an abusive relationship, okay. and I counseled her to take care of herself. She withdrew uh -huh. herself from the relationship, and uh -huh. a while later, she wanted back in. So, uh -huh. to me, that is truly the shadow at work. You know, yes. what, what do you say to people who can't seem to let go of something that might not be so good for them? That's an attachment issue. And it's one of my specialties is letting go. The reason we hang on is because often growing up, we had trauma and many people have equated love with hurt. And so when you do, you keep attracting people who hurt you and you put up with it. So when I work with people, we work on healing, we work on elevating, embracing that shadow part so we can heal it. It doesn't work to ignore it because you keep creating the same thing over. The other aspect that we work on is the attachment. And the, the better you get, the more you heal, the easier it is to detach. But there are certain technologies you can use. I use a few of them, ritual, guided meditation, hypnosis, to release the attachment. 
And that's why we often will go back to somebody who's not good for us or go back even though it's beating a dead horse. It's over. We're loath to let go because of the attachment. As a child, you would, we would die if we didn't get attached to a primary caregiver. So we're hardwired for it, and it's a big thing to get rid of it. It takes some doing, but it can be done, and a lot more easily than some people go the way they do it. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so in, in the case of this client, she couldn't see her own shadow and what huh. was, you know, what was causing her to want to stay attached to this. What do you say to clients who, I mean, we're kind of hardwired to not be able to see our shadow, right? And, and I tell them, go, go see somebody like you, you know, go see somebody like me or do my work or your work because we have a blind spot and uh, it's very easy to miss things if it's your own self. And so sometimes even reading is not enough. They need somebody to walk them through. And I know you and I, and I, the work we do with individuals or with groups, we're holding their hand through it. And we can see the places they're not seeing in a way that, that you know, it opens their eyes and they're motivated to finally move on and, and dissolve that. Is, is there any way that somebody can see their shadow for themselves to, to recognize it somehow? Definitely that self-diagnosis is possible. Many times when I've worked with people or when they've read my, I have some releasing work that, that's out there, releasing a person CD, it's like suddenly ding, 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 the bell rings and they finally get it. And, uh, and so it helps to to at least be open. Usually by the time people come to me or to you, they've been through a lot. They've got a lot of pain going on or they wouldn't come to us. And so at least they're that open to exploring. Oftentimes people don't want to let go. And when they don't, they're, they're in denial. You can't talk to them. Their friends will tell them this is not good for you. And they're like, you know, they're closed off. They can't hear it. And so usually by the time they come to us or get my work or your work, they're at least that open. They're motivated by some kind of pain. And that's where pain actually is good because it can push us out of a bad situation. So it's not the best way to do it, but it's one way to do it. it it'll, I always say it's going to happen. If you don't take care of yourself, you're going to find yourself at that point of pain because life yeah. brings you there so that you can get clear on what, you know, who you are and what you really want to create for yourself. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so, Catherine, uh, you wrote this beautiful quote that I love. There's no such thing as a broken heart, only one that is expanding into more love. Yes. So elaborate on that for us. Well, it feels like a broken heart when it didn't go our way. Well, guess what? That's that noose of attachment. And so the minute you get the news, you cut it down, you dissolve it, it goes away. But I don't believe, and I have never seen love to be a waste of time. You feel so good. Your heart is opening and you're floating in the air. You're having fun, maybe thinking about something. And so it's not wasted. It's just that process of, of dissolving it when it didn't work out that can be painful. And so... I don't believe that people say that right when they're getting out of it and they're in that pain of the attachment. But as soon as they let go, then their heart doesn't go back. They've learned to love more deeply and they continue to go forward and they their lives are enriched. Love is never bad. No. I, it's just the attachment. I totally agree with you. I think that nothing that we go through go through is for naught. We all, we get to use yeah. it one way or another and we get to know about ourselves more and it helps us to shape um, better relationships in the future. Um, so I know. Yeah. So, so what do you do to help somebody get over a heartbreak or get over that pain or help them to let go, help them to disattach? Do you have any specific uh, examples, rituals, whatever you want to share with us? Yes, I do. Um, what, what I do with people is a combination of teaching them, just like we're talking now, and it makes sense. So we're, we're getting with the, into their brain and usually their emotional body. But I add into it a guided meditation. We do a release ritual, and then we do the most important piece, which is the replace step. And that's the magic. 
And so it, it's easy to have everything framed in the perspective of this person. Would they like it? Would they not? Uh, we're thinking about them thousands of times a day at first when we're attached. As we dissolve, it calms down. We're able, but the more people can focus on their life beyond this person, the better off they are. And so as they do, they're able to move on. And some people very quickly, when they dissolve that attachment, they do meet the right person. And it's everything that one wasn't. <laughs> I've seen that time and time again in my work. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is just so perfect. To just, you know, just, mm -hmm. again, embrace it. Embrace yourself. Accept. Let go. Beautiful. And Yeah, and I love what you said, Nihola, about um, just that you're shaping what you want you're, and, and nothing's wasted. That's what I teach it. Every time anybody finds love with my work, and it happens a lot, they all say, wow, it's time. But it's, now I see why I went through everything that I went through. It was leading to this grand finale. And so they can't regret anything. They wouldn't have gotten here in, in love with their soulmate, live in the high life, if they didn't go through all that and refine what they wanted, healed, uh, learned to release better. It, it's, it's never wasted. Absolutely. Now, you talk about different levels of points of attraction. Uh -huh. Do you, you want to give us some examples of that and, um, you know, some examples of, of the work you do with clients around that? Yes, I would love to. And that really gets back to the shadow parts. Uh, down below, like I teach, there's three levels. The very base level is, is actually, if you look at your body and your chakras, it's kind of based down here. And it's on um, the sexual arena. It's the um, survival level. It's the animal level. And it doesn't really involve your emotions or your head or your heart. It's very biological. If you're desperate, desperate energy tends to repel people, as we all know. It's uncomfortable to be around. And that's at that level. Any sense of competition is very low level. So if you're trying to get the girl or get, you know, the, the flowers on Valentine's Day, it's at that level. It's at the wrong level. Very few long-term relationships could be even formed when you're at that level energetically, right? And so then there's the middle level, and that's the human level. Now that's, it's based up here actually in your head. That's where most relationships are formed and that's why there's a big divorce rate. Uh, and so that is very head driven. It's kind of boring. It's like, I'm going to meet the suitable partner, right? And now you want to go take a nap. Uh, it, it's manipulation where you think you have to get it just right or walk on eggshells or you won't get this. Or you lie on your dating profile because you don't feel good enough as is. It's very manipulative. It's not trusting. It's lower level fear than the bottom level, but it's still fear, right? Now, the level I want to get people to, my work is geared to getting people to, is up here. It's the soulmate level. It's heart-centered. It's when you know you're enough, that you're a catch for the right person, when you know that God has got you covered, that you are going to find love, that there's somebody out there meant for you, and you can't miss each other. Uh, you walk in your radiant, walk in faith, you have fun. So any of that energy of having fun, peace, hope, um, being ecstatic, being joyful, laughing, all of that is the soulmate level. It's very easy for love to come in there. And, and it's the soulmate. That's who you don't attract all these wrong people anymore. You attract your soulmate and very quickly it goes into more. So yeah, that's kind of the basics. It's complicated. There's more to it than that, but that's kind of the, the quick version. So maybe you can give us a little example of how you get somebody from the lowest level or the middle level to into their higher level of attraction. It's very much dealing with the shadow self. It's like you can't get from the here to here. You cut to go through. And so if somebody's at the bottom level where they're desperate, they've given up hope, maybe they're suicidal, they're attached, whatever it is, the first thing that happens is soothing because that's all you can do. And when there starts becoming some peace, then you can start replacing with better ideas of things, better ideas of who they are or what they could hope for in love. And, um, and again, I use guided meditations. I use ritual. I use many exercises and a lot of teaching. And, uh, and so 
it, there are different components. One is the inner, always the inner. There's no sports team in the world that would go out on the field without getting themselves in the right energy. So this is the same. But then there's the part about meeting people because it takes two to tango. And so many people choke up and go right back down when they face with real life attractive people. So then that's where the dating part comes in and keeping them in a good place and getting to meet people more easily. And so, you know, there are different ways to do it, but that's a little bit of how I would work with somebody to get them vibrating at soulmate level and stay there as they meet actual attractive people. Who, and that's who's most likely to be their soulmate is someone who's hot to them. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you want to actually um, tell us the details of a ritual that you might do? Can you share that with us? Sure. Well, uh, for the releasing part, if they had releasing to do, I actually do a release guided meditation, but then it gets good. When you get to the part where you're actually calling in the right person, I do what's called the soul call. It's an inner invitation, a guided meditation that I do where people start feeling that person and they start imagining what they're going to be like because it's always someone who's perfect for us as you and I know, because we're married happily. Uh, it's always someone with bonuses. And, uh, and so they start imagining what that would be like, who it would be. They start feeling them. And from that place of feeling them, I ask them to send out. And if anybody's listening wants to do a little mini one right now, send out their energy. And you can do this for anything. I did it for my literary agent and all kinds of things. We just send that invitation to the person who was meant for you, who was earmarked for you. You know, but they're available completely to you and they're hot to you. And so I have them do that energetically. And mostly when they do it, they feel it and they can feel that person getting it, getting the message and saying, I'm on my way. So it's very sacred. This is a very simplified way. I'm just telling you quickly, but it's about a 15 or 20 minute meditation. It's on my manifesting love CD. And then there's a little five minute version that a lot of people to sleep to and they kind of keep that so-called going in that way oh no that that is so beautiful I so appreciate your explanation and description of that and I I would think the most important part for anybody who's doing that ritual guided by you is to really feel it you know we're talking about it we're in our heads about it right now but but when they do it they've yes. got to they've got to conjure the feelings they've got to embody it they got to put it into their body and that's where the good, juicy stuff comes from, right? Exactly. And that's my goal. If they can feel it, if they can feel it in their emotions, in their heart, they get a lot closer. Um, but I always tell people, even if you fall asleep, I had a guy fall asleep when I did that live in a workshop in Atlanta. And he woke up at the end of the workshop. We couldn't wake him up. Uh, four months later, I get an email that he's engaged. So even if it goes into your subconscious and you don't feel it that you know of, it's still working. <laughs> That's powerful. <laughs> That's great. There's always a couple snores. When I do live workshops, there's always somebody snoring, you know. <laughs> so it goes in wherever it's meant to go in. Well, we know meditation can just really zone you out and some people can keep their awareness going and sometimes the body just can't keep up with that vibe. So, <laughs> that's great. It's now, like they might need more healing and they need to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. So, Catherine, you do a lot of traveling and you put on a lot of live events, right? Do you want yes. to tell us about some of the events you've done or if you've got anything coming up that you want to share with people about? Uh, I've done less and less as, as I got married and start having children because it worked for me too, my work. Uh, I travel less. I do a lot of virtual events, but in the summer I tend to go around and, and do a little book tour, a little teaching tour, which at, at the time we're speaking, it's over. I did it. <laughs> but if, you know, if it's summer when you're seeing this, I could be somewhere. You can look me up. I do a lot more virtual work. My work has gone internationally. So I have like a teleseminar coming up and we'll have people from all the continents on it. And, um, so if you look on my website, you can find out what I'm doing, how I can help you, which I would love to. And um, so the people who are listening to this, they could just, it's katherineallis.com. And that's K-A-T-H-R-I-N-A-L-I-C-E.com. And we got the link right down here below. And then you're going to give our viewers a fabulous giveaway too. Yes. You want to tell us about it? Yes, I am. 
Yes. Well, to the to the viewers seeing this, I am giving you a little course called the Ridiculously Easy Way to Love, and it includes audio and it also includes some written material because when you take things in a couple different ways, you learn it better. And then I'm giving you a little mini soul call so you can experience for yourself what it's like to go through that. So, so you get those three things if you sign up through the free gift link that's on this page, right? Yes. Absolutely. It's right down here below, right with Catherine Alice's website. And you've got, go ahead and claim your free gift. So, so in, yeah, I'd love to have you have that. In parting, um, do you want to give us a summary of what people can do uh, to free themselves of their shadow, empower themselves, you know, get recentered into their inner power? get into their authentic self, reclaim their hearts, and create true love like you did. Give us a little summary for that. Okay, sure. Well, I would suggest that they embrace the part of them that is in the shadow self. And don't judge it. Just know that it's valuable. Stay there. And so I would embrace it, do some healing in one way or another, and then put the focus on where you want to go. Because that's how to pull yourself beyond into the good place, the attractive place for what you want. And, um, and more than anything, if, if you could start having faith that you get what you want, that is the most powerful thing. Just believe that you get this. You get what you want. You get love. Because that is a power, as we know. Very powerful. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Catherine, for being here with us on my Heal Your Shadow Relationship Summit. I so appreciate your time and your presence and your beautiful work. Well, thank you, Nihola, for telling, for having me here. You are so welcome. And bye for now to all the viewers.